Who thinks this is going to be a good project? Mm. I got all the clippers. I just walked up to check on Kim and the boys. 30 minutes ago, we had a flower bed. Now, we don't have a flower bed. Yeah! There's a place I have found in the shade on the ground Far from all worries and troubling sound When I go there to be by myself Welcome back to Beauty in the Yard. You guys, today is another fall Saturday. So many things to do to clean up our yard and get it looking good for the holiday season. Can't tell if I'm cold or hot. I'm sure as I start working, I'll probably get warmer and lose my jacket. But this morning, the boys and I are going to be pruning our trees because there's lots of dead wood in our Japanese maples, cleaning up perennials in our flower beds that have just like gone crazy and just need to be groomed down. We're gonna blow out leaves, suck them up, right? Yes, I use the mower. Yeah. Easy. <laughs> Easy with the mower. I also have all these bulbs. And so my goal is, is to clean up the two front flower beds, then go up to the driveway by our garage and get a ton of bulbs planted in front of that boxwood hedge that we have along our driveway in front of, it's like in between the driveway and the tennis court. I wanna have that pop up in the spring with beautiful bulbs. Well, and I got this really beautiful combination. It's like a supernova or champagne supernova. I don't know. I'm excited about it. It's like peaches and cream. So I think it's gonna be gorgeous. Great, you guys excited? Yeah. yeah. Gonna be my good workers? Oh, the best part of all, we bought some new tools for this project. Oh, that's right. So I've got like new clippers, but they're like, it's like an electric chainsaw. It's a, and it's battery operated. I don't have it with us, but we'll show you in the video later. It's like this long with a handle. Super safe, I'm sure. But, Just like you can saw off your fingers really easily. <laughs> right, that's but we also have a, uh, a clipper that is battery operated and you pull the trigger and it clips for pruning uh, small limbs. Again, another thing that could easily just chop off your fingers because it's going to cut down whether you want it to or not. So we not. got those for Stuart to use, right? Stuart's gonna be the man on those. So today we get to demonstrate those. Now I don't know these brands at all, so it'll be a fun experiment to see how these work out for us. All right, you guys, let's get to work. Yeah, I get to use a chainsaw. I came back up here to get the tools for what we need. We're gonna load up the golf cart and go down there. Also, this is what I'm talking about, the space for the bulbs. Well, my idea is to plant all of these really beautiful bulbs along here. I'm not sure how far we'll get because I want it to be pretty thick. So I don't know if I have enough. So we're gonna go down to that front flower bed by the gate and then clean that all up and then move into that middle one and clean that up. And we're gonna use a blower, pruners, I don't know what else, just a lot of tools. We got time on our side. You gonna be my chauffeur today? Yes. You like my gloves? <laughs> oh yeah. And I saw you walking the line And the truth may come No, I got all of them. So you got them? I got all the clippers. Nice. Okay, so here's our front car, but I don't even know what happened. I guess we drove a tractor there's or something in here. Yeah, hopefully that didn't break. I don't know if we ever showed you before the actual damage because the, the tree was in the way. It kind of knocked that off of it. Or yeah, because I think, oh, see. I think it used to go up there. <laughs> now apparently it hangs out here. So no light there anymore. Oh, it bent over there. Oh, yeah, 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 fair miles. I showed the viewers, okay. it bent it. Log fell on it. All right, let's clean up. One of the things I really need to do is clean up these Japanese maples. I've been horrible. They've needed to have dead wood taken out of them for about three years. And I like doing it at the end of the season. I mean, I've done it like three times in my entire life. So I like, I like to do it at the end of the season before all the leaves are gone because then I know which branches are dead. Otherwise, when they all drop their leaves, I'm like, wait, which ones were they again? And then Emmett is bringing the tractor in so that we can clear out all the debris. So we're just going to clean all of this up. The car, mommy. Oh, that's extremely scary. Stuart, don't do that. So scary. Standing on the porch in the night, thinking how we used to be way back in time. In time. Barefoot on the grass, open skies I can feel it every time I close my eyes My eyes, yeah Can you remember when we were young and free Like queens up on a thrones Never surrender, we're having too much fun Could feel it in my bones I was never
Okay, so the boys have been moving a lot of the bamboo that they've been clipping along the gate in and the branches that I've been trimming up. The trees, I mean, we will see. They are hack jobs because they've been kind of just left out here to fare for themselves for a really, really long time and have never received the love that they need, which is so sad because they're like at the entrance to our house. And then over here, the boys have been clipping up the bamboo. We have lots of suckers and there's blackberry bushes in there. So we want to get this whole area cleaned up and tidy. And then <laughs> my sycamore. Number one, this was probably not even a good place for this sycamore, but it struggled to survive here for so long that now it's like hard for me to be like, oh, I'm gonna kick you out. So I don't know. I trimmed it up a bunch, took off like suckers and broken branches. It was originally just like a single tree that has become multi, multi, multi trunk as it's continued to be eaten and broken. So we'll see. It's just tied together and Maybe one day it'll be the most amazing climbing tree with like wide out branches. Okay, so as I'm trying to clear this bamboo, a lot of it is really, really thick and the, the hedge trimmers aren't working in it. But then also I came across this huge tree that just started growing in here. So Jason brought out- The Emoon. Not quite sure how to pronounce it, but this is our new mini chainsaw. Oh my gosh, this is so scary. And it's battery operated. It's probably the coolest thing I've ever seen. I mean, look at this. It's a real chainsaw. It's small in your hand, battery operated. That is a death. I mean, I love it. You should have a good battery in it. Number two, bar chain oil, just like a regular chainsaw. So I just filled it up. How often do you have to fill it? Whenever it's getting low. So oh. you can see it right here. So when you see it getting low, right now it's full. Oh, okay. Next thing is this is a primer for the oil. So we're gonna pump it well, maybe 10 times and then- Okay, show me. Ah! Yeah, get in here. Okay. Kim's first time with a, I don't even know what to call this, a mini chainsaw. Okay, safety buttons in. Do you think I should hold it with two hands? Yes. Okay. I'm trying to pull this. Ah! <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> Actually kind of awesome. All of our footage talking about this cordless clipper were shot in hyperlapse mode, so we lost our audio. Luckily, we have an Amazon Live to explain it. Tell the truth, you went crazy with this thing. I was like, She couldn't stop. I wanted to take it away from her. It was just amazing. I did not think I was gonna like these. And Jason's like, no, I think these are good. I'm gonna get them. And I'm like, mm. I think that Stuart would take his finger off with this, and that really scares me. This is hard bamboo, too. This yeah, is you not. Yeah, you get this, you guys? This is, this is aged. This is black bamboo that we've been growing for 10, 10 years. 10 years, yeah. Okay, this thing is a little funky. We can't really figure out, but I think it's like a it's double, double click. click. And yep. then you hear that beep. Okay, I'm going to show you this way so you can watch it, like, do its, like, magic with its magic mouth. Crazy, Ow. right? Okay. Well, okay, hello. I would not put I would not put your hand near no, me I when know. I got I think, my I think special you tool. Demonstrated sufficiently. This thing will chop through literally anything. I It's hard bamboo. I put it Look at to that. the I test yesterday. Even bend it. And the craziest thing was I was like thinking, oh my gosh, I'm so sad. It's probably gonna run out of batteries. And I even said that to the boys. I'm like, it's gonna run out of batteries and I love this thing. And um and it like still had a full charge after I had me. been using it for like an hour straight, chopping everything. We we watch the sun go down over the same old town Like so many times before we Look at the same old stars Battle the same old wars Like so many times before And I know that we're not perfect
All right, so I don't know if we're gonna get to everything that was on my list today because I got sidetracked. I got sidetracked in our bamboo and I thinned that all out. And then these kind of like weird, I don't know if they're like fig trees or some kind of weird thing that grows like in the corner of our area of our edge of our property. I started pruning those back and trying to cut out all the dead wood. So yeah, that's taken more time than I ever thought I would do. Also, new favorite tool, Obsessed. This thing cuts through everything i love it these are kind of the weird trees i'm talking about there is a lot of dead wood in them i can't get up to all of them the boys are trying to get stuff out of them but i did just come through and kind of like groom them up and then here is the bamboo at the front of the gate it was like hanging all the way over and now it's cleaned up you can see that it's going to get a lot more airflow through here now this winter and it will definitely just go crazy next spring and summer. All right, so this front flower bed is not perfect by any means, but at least we've got it kind of pruned up and we got a lot of like bark and extra leaves out of it. And we're gonna rebark it, but we're gonna lay down fertilizer first. And then I think this week I wanna get a lot of mums in here and probably some bulbs too. Hey darling, can I tell you what's been on my mind? Sick and tired of the nine to five in the city light. Hey, darling, we could get out of town. See the beautiful world around, wanna see it now. Pack our bags and get in that car. So in this flower bed, we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna clean it out. We're gonna cut a bunch of the stuff back. Like all of this is just going wild. And a lot of stuff is like kind of turning brown because of the cold. And so like those day lilies and just like all this stuff. So we're gonna to try to get it all cleaned up. You know that I'm the queen of overthinking. It's like we're done before we even started. So if this is the end now, baby, know that I gave him my all. I believe in us. I won't give up on you. I will be holding on for life. Hope you believe in us. Please don't give up on me. At least give me a try. Cause you're the best thing, the best thing. Good job, Stuart. Still got my hat. Yeah? Okay, so we just fertilized. We clipped up what we could. It's just kind of a crazy flower bed. I don't know. We uh, cut back all of the elephant ears. And anyways, it's good enough for now. 
it seems like it's about to start raining. So the boys have worked really hard. It's been a long day because we had soccer at 8 a.m. this morning and then um, we came home and started doing all this. So I feel good about it. And with the rain coming, this should all get like nicely fertilized in. And then I think I'm gonna plant the bulbs during this week sometime. Pizza just arrived, so everyone's super hungry. So we're gonna go in and probably watch like a movie together, snuggle, have pizza, and enjoy this kind of cool overcast day. We fertilize four times a year, kind of when the seasons change. I think it's important to give a lot of nutrients to the grass. We want it to be really thick and beautiful all the time. You know, for me, the basics of fertilizing are really simple. I just want to give a lot of nutrients to the grass so that the roots will grow deeper and stronger. And my experience is if I can keep the roots really healthy, the grass will come up thicker and it'll crowd out weeds. It helps to handle damage and we do a lot of things to damage. The boys have their bikes and motorcycles and stuff. And no matter how many times I tell them to stay out of the grass, my baby, they uh, love to run through it. And so we get lots of bike tracks. So it's important to keep a really healthy, strong root system. And so I like to fertilize. Honestly, I, I should fertilize more often. Right now I fertilize every three months. I thought about doing it every two months, but I've spent my whole lifetime trying to figure out the right type of fertilizer. So I have a variety that I use. Normally I like to go with an organic. Not that I think that organic necessarily has so many better properties, but it is less likely to burn the grass because I've had experiences with normal fertilizer fertilizer if I have too much to dump into an area. I even had my bucket tip over one time. Whenever I get too much in an area or if I get a little bit of a clumping and then I drive over it with the mower, it'll cause burning in that area. And it takes a long time to recover from burn marks. So the organics, it still can, but uh, they're less likely to burn. I can dump a whole lot more out. And so if I'm not as even as I want to be, then that helps me out for it to be organic and not burn as much. So anyway, that's what we're doing today. We're fertilizing. I only have enough fertilizer to do about half of our yard. Tomorrow I'll pick up more and we'll do the rest. And I got this guy here. Dad, is there any place that I can play tennis and golf in the yard? See, that's what I'm talking about. Damage. Look at that. And trust me when I say, when he's finished in about 10 minutes, there will be damage. Lots of it. on that front flower bed when I thought I was gonna plant bulbs by our driveway on Saturday. It rained almost, what, three days of this week. So we weren't able to get out here. Plus with the holidays and everything being so busy with regular work, I just have not been able to get out here. So here are the bulbs. We are going to go as fast as we can. I think we should even time this. We'll set a timer. We'll see how long this can take us because we've got an auger. And I've been excited about one of these ever since I realized they existed. And I was like, wait, that's amazing. So let's do this. I'm thinking these are the ones because I think they're just beautiful. This is the variety we're gonna plant along the parking area. So it's 16 Tulip Narcissus and they're called Champagne Supernova. They just look so beautiful. And I think they're gonna just be such a beautiful, thing happening as spring comes and as things start coming alive. Plus I'll be able to see them because they're right where we park. Oh, Turner, your phone locked. What? Wait, no, 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 stop, stop, stop. We just did the math. We have seven bags and each bag has 16 bulbs. So that is 112 bulbs that we're gonna do. So we're gonna do, a, I guess 112 holes. So we're trying to decide on the spacing of them. It says you can space them two to six inches apart. I wanted to do two inches. I'm using the bigger auger. I'm using the three inch because I want our bulbs to have a lot of space to grow. And um, we have really hard soil here. So I thought it'd be a good idea if I just gave them space. We decided we're gonna plant at six inches each. So like there'll be a three inch hole dug here at zero and a three inch hole dug here at six. Is that upside down? Probably. And then we decided rather than playing with this, we found a stick, very scientific, and it measures crazy six inches. So we're just gonna throw this down and we're just gonna start digging holes. We're gonna start in this area underneath this crepe myrtle, which I do need to trim up and 
clean. I think we're gonna do a bunch under here because there's some area under here and then we're just gonna do a straight line down. With my little hand rake, I'm just gonna pull back the bark. I was originally like pushing it towards the graft and I was like, that's a bad idea, Tim. So I'm just pulling it back this way and then we're just gonna auger really quick down everywhere. Right here? Yeah, I think so. I oh, know. Is it hard to do? No, I it's tight. It's supposed to be magic. Wait, are you going down? Yeah. Yeah, I'm huh. going. Is this way down? Why isn't it working? No, pull the trigger slowly. Okay, it's a little. Wait, okay. When you let go of it, it does that. Okay, okay. Why is this not working? Oh, maybe you have to like push through. Great. Great. The auger works for everyone else in the world, but of course it's not going to work here. Let's see. What the heck? <sighs> Plan two, we are going to dig a trench because apparently the augers that I thought were going to be magic for me are not because I don't know. I don't know. We are just gifted with the most amazing soil here. You do not even understand. Power tools don't want to even go into it. Jason came home. He's testing it now for us. He's fixing it for he you. He believes that it's just me. Oh, well, what just changed? Holy crap, why did that just go down? Well, that looks scary. That's not how Laura makes it look on Garden Answer. Why does ours do crazy things? I don't know. That was pretty deep and I thought that was perfect. It looked like it was crazy spitting dirt and being like wild. We're drilling holes with a drill. Okay. Where's the next one go? We're spacing them six inches apart and we have a special stick. In the middle or from the edge? That, how, like and, that, and like how that. How deep are we going? Cause I wouldn't really Six deep. inches. How deep did you go? Oh yeah, see, our, look at that. Our stick measures width and depth. Perfect. Oh, You're right. Okay, do another one. You, you've been hiding in the shadows way too long. Who thinks this is gonna be a good project? Mm. You always thought that you were weak, but babe, you're wrong. Yeah, you better step into the light, just give it a try. Think that it's time you let that spark out. You've been hiding in the shadows way too long. Jason's just suggested that we try a new drill because um, the drill we're using right now is starting to smoke on me and I don't think that's normal. What drill are we switching to? It's just a larger DeWalt hammer drill. Oh, it's got a handle. Yeah, it might be easier to hold. I like it. I saw that, but I thought it wasn't soft. And because if you So we started doing them stairs stacked like in between. So one layer back also just to like help us get more depth and more color. And we had 112 bulbs. So we're trying to like fit them all in, but then also have all these daffodils. We're making progress and it's almost time to start popping them in. The plan is, is that we're going to take this big bag of daffodils that we have and we're going to pop them all in like kind of in a I diagonal area saying. behind this crepe myrtle. I think that's what it is. Do I keep calling it the wrong name? No, it's a crepe myrtle. So then we're gonna do the champagne supernova and the narcissus in front and kind of just pack the daffodils kind of in around. That way we have enough bulbs and color and it can go all the way around. And 
we will be throwing some bulb tone into it. I don't even know, this is like EB stone. It's what our local nursery sells. I honestly don't think any of these things are that much different. I think they're just like all the same, just different brands. All right, here we go. Let's open the bag. Open the bag. Let's get the bulb tone open. And we forgot to set the timer, so no, I don't I, know. I said it. Oh, you did? Mm -hmm. Oh, guys. Emmett, you're amazing. Thank you for setting the timer. If I had ever guessed on how long this was gonna take us, I would be totally wrong. So I'm sure we totally failed on whatever this time is gonna be. I think the daffodils are gonna be first. So that'll you be good. I knew you were gonna do this. Hmm? I knew you were gonna spray it. Well, doesn't it seem like that's the fastest yeah. thing to do? All right, so we've got a process down. We have put down all the fertilizer and then we've been dropping in the Jumbo Daffodil King Alfred bulbs. 44.50 for 70 of them. Hopefully they do well. Um, I think this will be really pretty here. <gasps> my drink! I just spilled my drink. I stepped on it. <laughs> Still okay. So I'm just gonna throw these bulbs in and just start throwing dirt on them. We started putting a planting, like a new plant soil mix on it, or even like a seed starter mix on them because the soil is rocky and clay and I just wanted them to be able to like come up nicely, but we ran out. So we're getting more soil from across the yard and Turner's bringing it over. So we'll start throwing that in after I drop all the bulbs. And it's the best. So he just went down and grabbed this dirt. It's like a humus or something, hummus. I don't know, like something. Nice. <laughs> but anyways, the, the bulbs are gonna like it better than just putting that rocky clay soil back on top of them. And then we'll just continue to coat with the um, bark. So until recently, I did not really understand the anatomy of a bulb. And I mean, let's be real. I don't know the anatomy of the bulb truly anyways, but I'm not sure in the past. I mean, I've had bulbs come up for years. So obviously I planted them right, but I think I've also planted them upside down. So in case you've ever been like me and for some reason thought, this could be a root. This is actually the flower. This is the root. So I think I have planted them down like this. That won't work. But now we're gonna plant them the right way. The the kids. Oh, nice. Love Stuart's you. the Santa of uh, bulbs. We really need some fancy bulb basket because um, right now we're using a drumstick box out of the trash to hold the bulbs so that we can throw them in. dead weight, something you're good for. Let's get that mesh down a little bit. Well, it took longer than I thought it was going to, and we're not completely cleaned up yet, but we got them in the ground, and we got the holes dug. I learned how to use that auger, and um, the boys helped so much, so I'm so grateful. And kind of, we're gonna clean up now. There's a big mess. In the spring, I think these are all gonna pop up pretty. And I did like a heavier planting right here because let me show you when i drive home i drive in this way this kind of like 45 degree angle of the tennis court is going to be like one of the first things that i see and i'm just hoping this whole area just like pop with beautifulness okay so it's time to mark them because otherwise we will absolutely forget well hopefully now that i'm filming it i'm not going to forget because now i have a record but you know it'll help other people just like not just start digging into our bulbs. So I have these like really beautiful slate markers. So I'm going to write champagne supernova tulips on one and then um, super jumbo daffodils on another. And we'll probably just like put them out every like 10 or 15 feet so that you're like, oh yeah, there's bulbs here. And then I also got this waterproof chalk pen. So hopefully it works. This is just a trial and error, so we'll see. It could be beautiful. It could also not even show up. 
I wish I had pretty handwriting. This is not going to look that pretty. Gosh dang it. I wonder if I can wash this off and try again. Jason, my handwriting's horrible. It looks like I'm a kindergartner. Why can't I have prettier handwriting? It's like the elementary garden. Yeah, the elementary garden with Kim. Oh, look at that beautiful bar. Good job, Turner. Okay, come on, let's get going. <laughs> get going. Yeah. dusty or is it actually warm? Why don't you go put your hand in there? Oh. It's because we're successful composters. So good from farming. Oh my gosh, that is warm. That is the craziest thing I've ever felt. Look at, wait, I can see it. I can see the, I wonder if I can pick it up on the camera. Oh yeah, do you see that going up? Isn't that crazy? So Emmett did start a stopwatch for this project. I don't know how long it took yet. He'll come back and we'll either add it in or we'll share. But the grass is cleaned up. It's rebarked. We've got name tags in it and it looks so much more clean and nice. And I'm so excited. I'm so glad I got this done. I've been wanting to do this for like three weeks and we have a lot of bulbs still to plant. We live in California and we get a longer grace period for planting bulbs than other people. So. Thank goodness, because otherwise we'd already be like frozen and wouldn't be able to get them in the ground. All right, you guys, thanks for watching us today. And see you in the next one. Bye. Bye. Uh, you got an Emmett coming up. <laughs> yeah. You gotta get out of his way. I'm gonna ram into him. I am so scared for my life. <laughs> ah! What's going on here? Who taught you how to drive? Oh! Oh, hold on. Oh. oh my gosh. I do not know what's going on here. The sun got in my eyes and I could not see. Okay, take me over to the quad. <laughs>